Good evening, everyone. Paula McCoy, Colors for Earth. How are you guys this evening? Thanks for joining me. Be sure and comment, like, share. If you haven't subscribed in Good my- Good evening, everyone. Whoop. Hold on. I'm gonna Paula try McCoy. to get everything ready. For Earth. I am by myself tonight, so uh, I'm running all the controls. So bear with me if I miss a question. Um, be sure and ask it again to bring it to my attention. So as I was saying, if you haven't subscribed, be sure and subscribe to our uh, YouTube channel and uh, like, share, ring the bell. The bell will give you notifications uh, to the whether I upload a video or if I'm going live, so you'll get those notifications. So I see there's a few people out there. Be sure and comment so that I can see that I'm seeing all the comments. Hey, Eddie, I see yours. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. All right. Just check in. So I uh, recovering today is August 2nd, 2022 and uh, recovered from cross my fingers COVID. Um, so feeling much better. Hi there, Marie. Okay. So feeling much better, still get tired, but I hear that that's part of it. So I think I had a mild case compared to others out there. So, hey, Debbie from Alabama. Awesome, thanks for joining me. Okay, as I was saying, I'm alone tonight, so hopefully I can get this done. The first thing that I want to um, show you is some of the things that I'm teaching at the Fire Darts Expo, which is up in Waukesha, Wisconsin. If you're in that general area, which is south, north of Chicago, south of Green Bay. Um, I've never been there. So um, looking forward to that other than the drive, not looking forward to that. Hi, Linda. And you are in Murphy's. Murphy's where? Marlene, hi from Florida. Okay, so the expo is um, next week. It's the 11th, 12th and 13th. And let me uh, show you the pieces that I'm gonna be doing. So here is uh, these are the stoneware pieces I'm showing. So you have an option of doing stoneware or earthenware, um, doing the lemons, strawberries, leaves, learning how to do a watercolor background. So that's one of the pieces. Another one is this um, sweet pea and butterfly. So that's a fun one also. And then we have the red flowers. So learning how to do some brush strokes with a different brush, uh, learning how to do blending on your leaves. So that is the third class and then the last one is this mug uh, this like i said these pieces are all stoneware uh, you have a choice of earthenware or stoneware if you sign up for the classes early you save ten dollars a class so keep that in mind if you're in the northern area and you're able to join me all right so let me and my mics okay Hey, Misty, how are you? Maybe I'll get to Florida soon or next year. We'll say next year. I'm going to try to take it easy. This COVID has really, um, it just kind of zaps you, your energy and stuff. So I'm, I'm working on it. So didn't know what I was going to do tonight. So I whipped this one out a couple of hours ago. It is not fired, of course. Um, doing it all with color concentrates. So what I've done, this is actually a piece of uh, Mako's stoneware. I grabbed it. Tonight I'm going to work on earthenware on a plate. So I'm going to show you how to stamp. I'm keeping it all in the cerulean family tonight. Okay, meaning we are going to do light cerulean, cerulean, and deep cerulean concentrates. Okay, the only other thing that you need is the gloss medium. NT Clear, the CSP01, it helps with blending, makes it a little bit easier to manipulate and move those colors around, even on the stoneware, but you only use it on your mid-range stoneware uh, to do blending. You never use it as a clear coat, okay? So before I start, I wanna show you a little trick because I always forget at the very end and I forget to show you this. So as you're working, if you're wanting to see what your colors are gonna look like more when they're fired okay just take a little mister bottle with water and you can mist that piece doesn't matter if it's stoneware earthenware doesn't matter so that will give you more of what 
your colors are going to pop and be when it's fired. Okay, little trick that I learned many, many, many years ago, 20 some years ago, and I don't remember who showed me that, but I wanted to make sure I shared that one with you guys. And you guys don't let me forget to give uh, away prizes at the end, okay? Because Jenny's always in my ear normally, um, and she's not here tonight. Um, next week, I will be on the road driving. I'll see about doing a live while I'm on the road, but um, don't hold me to it, okay? After driving two days, all right? So uh, if you don't know, just like this is just cheap uh, tissue paper. You can use sandwich wrap actually also um, and it's cut in these sheets which is kind of nice so what i did was i took a pencil i had my pattern underneath it i drew it out with a pencil uh, originally i was going to have sun flare on here and then i changed my mind i just kind of start painting and whatever happens happens then i use the statler tri plus fine liner it has a point like a sharpie and i traced over those pencil lines which caused it to bleed onto my piece, okay? So look what happened. You see that? I hit it with the Mr. Bottle so it's starting to fade. So anytime moisture or product, which is moisture, hits your lines, you take the chance of them uh, actually fading away. So be careful of that. And don't freak out if the color of the marker you're using bleeds through your colors, um, it burns off. It, it's, it's not gonna hurt it, okay? Now, the stamps that I used, we have a bunch of stamps on our uh, website, but this particular set I do not sell. This is from my car bridge, claypuzzling.com, and I just picked out because I had an image here that I was going to paint. Instead of using the stamps with the finer detail, I chose to use the three stamps with a larger detail. I didn't want it to get really too busy in the background, okay? So that's the reason I did that choice. All right, so we're going to stamp first. So you always want to make sure you transfer your pattern. And then just using a little pouncer sponge, okay, is all you need. And I'm going to take the CC150 Light Cerulean, which I have some out here on my palette. I'm going to load it, and then I'm going to pounce it out to really get it into my sponge. And then I'm going to lightly tap onto the stamp and just keep going over the areas don't push hard because if you push hard you're going to fill in all the gaps or in between the lines and you're wanting just the lines another thing too is be careful if you get it out especially if you're on a curved surface watch if you get it over on the edges of the stamps so i'm going to start with this larger one and i'm just going to put it start at the middle and work yourself out on your plate, okay? So any questions you have, be sure and put them in the chat, like I said, and tell me where you're from if uh, you didn't say so already, okay? So I'm just gonna go in here and do all of these and just work back and forth between them. So I'm just, whenever the stamp is, ready and loaded it'll kind of glisten you see how it's kind of got that shine to it so but be careful if it's out here on the other area where you don't want it to be all right so then i'm just going to come over here and i'm going to apply that one there and i'm pushing down the nice thing about this foam it allows you to bend um i haven't used this one yet but if you were bending it you could get into a surface or if you were going um, like around on a vase, you can rock these and go around and then lift it up. So you can see it's just a soft, so I'm using the lightest color to do these because I want this in the background. I don't want it in my face, so to speak. Okay. Hey, Miss Ginger, how are you? All right, so I'm just loading with the color concentrates. And I'm going to sneak this one in here. I do have a leaf that's going to be over it, but that's okay. Not a problem. So just go back and forth, load your pouncer sponge. You could even do it with, uh, you know, um, like a light gray in the background. I just chose to do monochromatic tonight. 
um, we don't do a lot of that. So I thought, well, let's just, let's just do it. I had one thing on my mind I was going to do, and then I changed my mind. But that's okay. We can do that, right? All right, so just continue and just sneak these in wherever you can, working from the inside out, okay? And then I might want to leave some of that, let it dry, go back over here and go to another area. You could also do this with um, color strokes if you wanted. Make sure that you don't um, change the direction of the stamp. Don't keep allowing it to go in the same direction. That gets boring and it's repetitive. You can actually, your eye will go to that area and focus on that. So try to change it up. So see how you, I was able to bend it. This is like a coupe kind of a plate. Okay. Then we'll go in with the small. Good evening, Margaret. Thanks for joining me. North Carolina. I will be in South Carolina, Columbia, South Carolina, doing their show. It's fired arts, ceramic, mostly ceramics. I do have my glass products there with me. And that is the last day of September, the 1st of October. And the information is on my website on the calendar. And the calendar can be found at the bottom of the website. So I'd love you if you pre-order, call me and pre-order, you get a discount on your order. Same way with Waukesha. If there's something, if you're going to be there, something you want to order, then uh, reach out to me and I'll get you a discount for pre-ordering and pre-paying, okay? All right, so I'm gonna try to, eh, let's see if this works. Let's see how flexible this stamp is. We're gonna roll it up that edge. Nice. Now, um, something that you may not know, I'm gonna take a Taclon square shader water load just to get it wet. I've got some color here that I don't want because it was on the edge of that stamp. So I'm just going to kind of swish it or dilute it and kind of push it towards the stamped area so that it doesn't show up out there. Okay. The gel in the um, concentrates keeps it open long enough that you're able to manipulate and move things around. So that's a nice feature of them. Let's bounce them on that paper towel. So, so anytime you have color that's out on that edge, okay, on the very edge, you may want to either keep that brush there. You know, you can take that brush and just take it off real quick. But remember, the longer you wait, um, your stamp's going to get dry. The color's going to harden on there and you'll have to start over. So see, that's on a curve. So I'm just pressing down, making sure, and it worked just fine. Okay. All right, so these are color concentrates, which are translucent underglaze made for greenware, bisque. They will go to cone five, cone six, or just your lower firing, your earthenware, which is your 0406. Total different than cone six. Some of the colors do change a little bit. Uh, pinks and purples tend to burn out at your cone five, cone six. So go to your color stroke pinks and purples. Those will hold at that temperature. Okay, so another one on the curve. And I'm going to quickly swish that off so I don't see it. I've got a little bit right there. Any questions about what I'm doing? Be sure and put those in the comments. And I'd love for you guys to share what you're doing. Uh, you can tag me in a group. If I'm in that group, you can tag me. Um, or you can tag me on my page. And it will notify me that you have posted. But I'd love, I just love seeing what everybody is doing. We have so many new people using the product. And everybody uses it different ways. Okay, so... Like I said, change the direction of what you're doing so that 
all the leaves aren't going the same way. You want to make it interesting and not like little, what I call rabbit tracks. Okay. All right, we're almost done with this. A couple more. And it doesn't have to be, uh, you could do different colors, but I wanted this soft in the background. And as soon as I get the stamping done, I'll show you again the plate for those that joined us a little bit later. Okay. All right, let's do this big one. And I'm going to, these I actually put on top of what I was doing. So that's kind of the way I'm going now. So I'm up against that edge, rocking it, pressing really good, going over it a couple of times just to make sure that it's there. Now the marker will fire away. So don't freak out about that. I got a little bit, that's the problem with the curve. It picks up everything that's on that stamp. So have that brush handy. This is just a tack on brush so that you can get rid of that before it absorbs into your wear. Um, remember that if you're on the stoneware, like Mako Stoneware Bisque, um, the colors really absorb fast and they're very thirsty. Uh, so keep that in mind that you need to work faster. Okay, so there you go. Kind of cool. So you could change it up. You could do each leaf in, you could do this in your traditional fall colors if you wanted. You don't have to do it in just the blues. I just wanted to do something different um, because a lot of people don't think about doing this. Okay. Again, make sure you shake your colors to liquefy them. Remember, they are thick citropic. Uh, they're in a gel base, so they need to be shaken or stirred, and then they will liquefy more. Now I've got, once again, 150 light cerulean, 151 cerulean, 152 deep cerulean. Okay. And then I'm adding yeah, equal parts or a little bit less, the CSP01 NT clear gloss medium, which is our clear glaze. And I'm just going to add some of that to each one of those, just so that it makes it more movable and easier for me to blend the colors. All right. I like to keep a sponge and I mix with the handle of my brush because I waste less product. If you do it with the hairs, then you've got to try to get as much out. You got to rinse it before you go into your next color and you've wasted product. Okay. So just doing it with the handle of the brush works great. All right. And I would like to thank you guys uh, for sharing. I just hit 6,000 subscribers when I signed in today. I noticed that. Thank you. Thank you, everyone that has uh, joined and shared. That's awesome. That's a pretty, pretty nice milestone. All right. I'm going to go to the medium sumi brush. Okay. I'm going to wet that brush. Always wet your brushes before you start. Blot it out on a paper towel. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up the middle. And I said I was going to show you the So here is the plate again. Okay. So you can see the blue stamping. I originally kind of sketched a vine around the edge. That's what those lines are. I was going to do like a grapevine. And then I, after I got the stamping on there, I decided not. You could even do a stencil in the background if you don't have stamps. And you've got a stencil, depending on the shape of your piece, you could just randomly put um, different stencils, you know, whether it be uh, scroll work or it could just be dots or squares or it could be anything, you know, or maybe you've got a stencil for a leaf. Okay, you could do that too. All right. Hi, Linda. Can I use your glass products or does it need to be the ceramic product? If you're on ceramics, you need to use the ceramic colors. Um, some of our ceramic colors do work on glass. Um, you could stamp on glass the same way that I just stamped here, Linda. Okay. Uh, absolutely. With the concentrates, we have uh, quite a few videos. Plus we have um, 
Uh, Debbie Elmer did a technique and we have a downloadable or a DVD on the complete, we call that the ink technique uh, when we did that on glass. Okay. All right. So I'm going to load, since I used the light cerulean uh, in the background, uh, now I want to go to the middle color, which is the cerulean, and I'm going to fully load. You know what? I lied. We're going to load in the light one. That's what happens when you do something like two hours before you go live. Okay. Fully load in the light color. Really shampoo. I call it shampooing that brush up. It's just like when you uh, shampoo your hair, you wet your hair first and then you apply the shampoo. We wet the brush, blotted it out, and now we're going to apply the color to it. And I'm just kind of shaping it. And then I'm going to lay the brush down, okay, and pick up that color on this side. So see, you see the light and the dark? Okay, the dark is going to be next to my seam of the pumpkin, okay? So I'm going to start up here at the top with the dark down towards the seam. And I want to do this one first. And I'm going to press all the way down and try to, it, that's why you need it fully loaded so that you can get all the way. I'm going to load the same way again. And then I'm going to brush back and forth. And because I have the gloss medium with that product, it allows me to blend and when you're doing this back and forth to kind of blend it and get it a nice even coverage, you're actually applying a couple of coats versus just one coat, which is nice. So because of the way the sections lay, you start in and work yourself out. We will have to go to a smaller brush as we get to those back. So again, I've got that light color, the light color on side load or the whole side of the brush in the middle color. And I'm just going to, even just this regular ceramic bis, it grabs that color. It's thirsty, I call it. And I'm just going to work it back and forth, grab some more, maybe not as much of that darker blue, because I just need to kind of fill this in. But I am adding a little bit of it, just because I want it to blend with what I've already got on there. Now this is the medium sumi brush. Um, this is one of my older ones, so it has a different color handle. The new ones have the blue handle. And there is a set of four of those. I believe they're still on sale. If you're looking for, it's great to base coat with. Um, you can shade. There's so many things that you can do. See how I'm just kind of going over that to make sure that I got a nice even coat. And because I did that, I think I need to go back and add a little bit more on this one. We're going to shade with the darker color on those sections later. Okay. Any questions? All right. I'm keep looking up to see if there's any questions. Okay. I'm going to wait on that one because it needs a smaller brush. So I'm going to go ahead and go over here. And the center one is going to be shaded on both sides. Okay, see how thirsty that is? Boy, it just grabs that. You could use the color strokes if you only have those. Color strokes are basically um, what I've mixed up here. That's a color stroke. So like 50-50 with your concentrates and your gloss medium is a color stroke. Other than there is a touch of clay in those, but not enough to even know it's there if I didn't tell you. Okay, so they're already pre-mixed basically for you. Got a little hair in there. Okay, but you do want to keep your strokes following the shape. You would never want to go across the piece. It needs to look natural in the way it grows. Okay, so now I loaded the same way. I'm going to turn the brush over so that that dark color is next to the seam towards that center of that pumpkin. And go all the way down and come all the way back up. So do you guys like the blues or would you go back? You could do it in the traditional oranges. Um, put orange on and use tangerine or uh, red geranium, candy apple red. You can use those. To shade with. 
or maybe you want to go, you know, a neutral. You could go with ivory, shade with nutmeg, so many different things. Hi, Paula. Let's see. Marie has a question uh, off topic, but can you please correct my name to show? I can't do that. That's within your YouTube um, settings, Marie. You'll have to go in there and change that. So that has something to do with how you signed in and signed on, okay? And then can you please, whenever you have a chance, can you please correct my name? Oh, you put it in there twice? So correct your name. I can't correct it on YouTube, but uh, if you ordered and you put your name in correctly, that's how your orders and things should come to you. But I can't change any of your YouTube, but that's within your Google and YouTube settings. So you have to do that, okay? All right. You're welcome. Okay. All right. So I'm just continuing around, fully loading with the lighter, dragging through or half the amount of the brush. And then I'm turning that brush so that dark side is down towards the seam. And the shading would be towards... The center of the pumpkin is where we would want that. Okay. So to follow the shape, the more you press down, the fatter the stroke is going to be. The larger the brush in the area, the softer the look. Doesn't matter what you're doing, what products you're using. That it, it, that's the same way on everything. So always use the, as large a brush as you can use in the area to get a softer look and you won't show as many brush strokes. I'm going to go back over here. I see an area I don't like. So I want to add a little bit more shading there. Just make sure that you even that out when you do it. You don't want to just hit one spot because it's going to show. Remember, this is a translucent underglaze. Okay. So what you see is what you're going to get all right so i need some more blue and we've got to switch to a smaller brush to do those other ones again just mix with my handle and my brush so i don't waste my product the gloss medium just allows it to move freer and gives you more time it stays open longer, more time to blend those colors. Okay, so now I'm going to go to the small semi brush. I wet it, blot it out to remove the excess moisture, fully load in that lighter cerulean, grab some of the cerulean, the 151, and that darker color is down against the area that we've already done. I'm going to grab a little bit more of the dark. So you got to take a little bit more care. Remember, your pattern is just a guide. And because of it being a smaller section, I'm going to go ahead and go over it a couple of times while I'm here. Uh, it's absorbing great into the bisque. So I don't have to wait and come back and add color, you know, more coats later. Hopefully that makes sense. So these can be used on greenware or on bisque, or they can be used as a Mangelica or Myolica technique. And if you don't know what Myolica is, um, you usually have a base glaze that doesn't move and you paint on top of it. And then the colors melt into that glaze. Uh, it's really popular in Italy. They do a lot of that. I'd like to do the matte glazes underneath and then put the concentrates on top. My little, in case you don't know, on the website, uh, at the very bottom, there is a product manual that you can print out and it shows all of our products and you can just print the page that it pertains to the products that you have and it tells you, you know, what works well with the matte medium what other products on the market is and what ours what our product would be that's equivalent to that so that's kind of nice so Majelica, i like to put the matte medium underneath 
or the potter stone buff which is a speckled matte we also have a white glaze that's a gloss that you can do Majelica on. Now these are all for 0406 firing. Those glazes do not uh, fire to cone six. Okay, so I know that makes it a little confusing. So I'm just going over these smaller areas a couple of times to make sure I have a nice, and I'm gonna, right here I've got those brush strokes from that one section above it. So I'm gonna soften that because I don't want a brush mark aiming in, okay? Rinse that brush. What clear do you recommend? I use Speedball's Clear Cone 6, and my color is vanished. Okay, so Margaret, if you used some of the pinks and purples, and you used them as a wash, which is what a, a lot of Jessica, uh, how she uses it, the problem is, she is normally using like speedball under glazes, which are opaque, which that would be like my color strokes. Okay. The color strokes are in a different bottle. Actually, they're in a different bottle than this now because of COVID. But anyway, the color strokes are an opaque under glaze. They are a little more chalkier. Um, they already have the medium in them and you can blend them. The pinks and purples will not fade um, in the color stroke line, Margaret. Okay, so if you're using everything as a wash, Jessica tends to make washes out of like Speedball or whoever else she might use. And so those are opaque underglazes she's making into a wash. These are translucent underglazes. So use them heavier or don't thin them down like you're doing those other underglazes. Okay, two totally different species, so to speak. Okay, so use them maybe with a little water in your brush and dip it in and come in and do something, but don't thin that way, way down like she does in a lot of her techniques because it's going to go away. And don't forget, um, I don't have my high fire chart here, but don't forget that uh, on the blog, there is a post with the chart of the, all the color concentrates that I did at a cone six. I used um, Amico's HF9 clear glaze, but I know that uh, there is people that use Speedball clear. Um, I'm using Jessica's. It's, it's holding just fine. And you weren't here, Margaret, at the beginning, but this is my color stroke purples. I have three purples, 638, 37, and 36, and they're all on there. And when you layer colors, it's going to hold better also. But this is a different formula than what our concentrates are. So you definitely uh, check those out or, you know, just message me on Facebook or email me and, at, you know, show me what you've got. But you won't lose, and the red stay red. This has got Jessica's um, 2167 over it. And these are fine. So just don't thin them down. I think that's what everybody is so used to and what, what they're doing. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to, hopefully that helps. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to switch to a number eight Kalinsky square shader. And I did wet it, blotted on the paper towel. And I'm going to pick up the middle blue, the cerulean blue, fully load. Then I'm going to corner load. And when I corner load, I always have the writing of the brush towards me. Corner. And that's getting a little thick. I may have to stop and thin that. Blend on your palette. Flip it over. Dark to dark. Blend again. Do that a couple of times. Okay. And then I'm going to turn the plate. And I'm going to do this leaf here. So I'm just going to press. I'm putting the dark side towards the bottom of the pumpkin. You can kind of give it a little bit of a wave. And then as you lift, come off that chisel edge so you're up. Okay, so I didn't pat, pat, pat. I pressed, pulled, gave it a little wave, and came off on the chisel. Now all I have to do is re-corner both colors, blend again, and you're ready. Okay. Oh, thank you, Ginger. You like the butterfly on that dish. I use the color concentrates, Eddie says on my fairy houses, but I also am putting them on heavy and use speedball clear. Okay, so Margaret, there you go. Um, maybe a friend, Eddie, 
and go look at his page. Have you put them out on Facebook, Eddie, that somebody could see them and then she could ask you any questions? So here I'm just kind of press, 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 and I'm just kind of following the shape. I'm doing half of that leaf because it's a larger one. Okay. Thank you. I have clear and the HF9. Yeah, Jessica's works fine too. I mean, I like it really well. I can get away with one coat on the stoneware. Yes, please do uh, message me and then we can discuss uh, anything else that I need to help you with. I don't mind doing that. Okay, so I'm just kind of following the shape and kind of a little bit of a curve. Now, I had the dark to the outside here. I left the dark on the bottom so it almost gives a fold in that leaf okay you could put the dark on the outside on both if you wanted it really is to your liking and if you don't want to do brush strokes there's other ways to do leaves which i've showed on other uh, videos so be sure and go back and check those out so here we go press pull lift 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 and come off the chisel don't get in a hurry i think when people just try to whip it on there and get it done quick that's when those you know mistakes happen or they don't like what they've done so as you can see and i'm not going just slow for you guys that's how i paint okay that is how i do it and i'm going to kind of wave it a little bit here and come off and then i'm going to turn this one load again so i'm loading for each uh stroke so that may be another thing, Margaret, maybe, uh, you know, depending on how you're using the product might make a difference on how it's going to appear after it's been fired. Okay. Whether it's watercolor, brush strokes, solid application, you know, that will make a huge difference too. Trying to screen print. So maybe not quite thick. Yeah. If you can't, if you've added the, um, silk screen medium to the concentrates and it's not coming through a silk screen then you definitely are too thick okay so these are those other leaves and i'm just doing a wedge stroke just a press pull lift lift and come off that chisel edge grabbing what's on my palette and come off see how nice and slow those are it makes a huge difference in your stroke work okay so i would try margaret 2167 first jessica's um if i had my choice i could only uh, because of covid you know everything has been so um you just can't find supplies and that was the only one before clay share week that i could get my hands on to do samples because um, we really hadn't hit the uh, mid-range market Okay, so there is those. Um, I did come back and I added a few more leaves over here on my original one. So let me go ahead and do that while I've got this brush loaded. And we'll just put a couple more here. So this is a regular 0406 ceramic disc that I'm working on here, but the original one uh, was Mako's stoneware disc. Okay. Because I haven't had time to roll out any clay and won't for a couple of weeks, probably. All right. I'm going to rinse with being sick and everything. It zaps it out of you. Rinse your brush. Always check it on the paper towel to make sure you've got all that color out of there. If you still see color, then rinse it again. Just swish. Uh, don't use it across any of those rough grates. Uh, or anything. These are underglazes. Nice and soft is all you need to do. Just swish it in the water. It'll be fine. So now I'm going to use a number four round. This is uh, the 2004 KB for a Kalinske blend. And I'm going to do the stem. So I'm going to fully load still again in the middle blue, the Cerulean 151. And I'm going to tip into the 152. And I'm going to kind of just draw in, so to speak, the little points to start with. And then I'm going to kind of 
make almost like a comma stroke as if that is twisted okay as it's coming around and just reload as often as you need to so see how i'm just coming up that edge of the stem come up you may have enough of the lighter blue and maybe i'm going to go back on this one i didn't have enough dark and you're just layering it up twisting it hey luann from indiana i need to work on my strokes slower yeah you got to go slow and you're going to be in class i got the signups today and i'll bring that glass bowl that you wanted also luann if that's okay that'll save you shipping i'd almost forgotten about it and it was hidden but as i've started gathering things um i found it okay so just come up that stem like i said you could do this in browns oranges you could do it all individually uh, the exact colors you know orange browns greens i just um, i'm a blue if you haven't noticed yet these are my three favorite co colors and they work really good on the stoneware so um wanted to make sure that you knew that so hopefully and just the gel base of everything um makes it move nicer i think and i think anybody that's used it on cone six will tell you that i think eddie can attest to it just it moves really well okay yes luann okay i will bring that with me all right so i'm going to turn this and now what i've done is pick up the 3600 number two liner our kalinsky liner and i'm going to pull in stems so i'm going to come down the center remember a brush stroke is who knows what the answer is you're going to win a prize whoever can tell me what a brush stroke is it's a combination of three things who is going to be the first and it's the first one that i see on my screen because uh, everybody's comments appear differently depending on your internet speed okay so who can tell me what a brush stroke is made up of what three things does anybody know that's watching what is a brush stroke made up of you're going to win a 3600 number two liner i hit 6000 youtube subscribers so i'm feeling uh, generous tonight so all right guys come on nobody's answering that i can see what is a brush stroke made up of three different things what do i always say in every one of my videos and no don't go listen to one of the other videos um, i forgot i want to go down one side of these areas also to kind of give it an outline and anytime that you go over the top of another color you're layering the colors it's going to make it more intense when you're outlining if you do thick and thin it makes it more interesting plus if you get thick on an area and you didn't stay exactly um, then nobody's going to notice it all right marie says how about one out of three <laughs> you're right that is one out of three so marie says one of the words is pressure what is a brush stroke made up of now ginger if you're still on i know you know this so i'm just kind of doing a loosey-goosey i call it very irregular nothing perfect anybody know what those three words are okay let's see marlene dicker motion color and pressure you are the winner yay awesome all right now i gotta get a piece of paper i am alone tonight and um jenny jenny had something going so let me write that down real quick Marlene, if I don't have your address, if I've never shipped you anything, would you please um, message me on Facebook with your shipping information and your email so you get a tracking and I will send you one of these brushes, okay? <laughs> Were you just not saying anything, Miss Ginger? 
<laughs> it is a great brush, I have to say. I'm kind of prejudiced, but and it's a it it's a good deal as far as price too. It's only like seven bucks or something. So for a Klinsky liner, that's that's a really good deal. So I'm just gonna pull in my stems, larger leaves. I'm gonna go ahead and outline and I'm just doing um, thick and thin. So a brush stroke is comprised of color. The amount of pressure will determine the size of the line that we get and the motion. So if I'm curving, doing stroke work, so color, pressure, and motion was the correct answer. I like to ask that a lot. So remember that. Make you a post-it note. Color, pressure, and motion is a brush stroke. And it could be one color on the brush. It can be multiple colors. Doesn't matter. Okay. All right. Now, let me thin some more down. So instead of thinning that big puddle of dark blue, which is the deep cerulean 152, um, I bring a little bit out because it, the water is going to evaporate. So there's no reason to thin all that. You'll just keep thinning and thinning and thinning. Uh, it's it's kind of silly to waste your time doing that. Okay. So I'm going to keep my liner on that line where we shaded. And then we'll come in and add some accent also. So you see how quick this was? So if you're doing shows, this would be, you could even uh, press the leaves into your clay if you're doing hand built stuff and then come back just leave your an area open that would be very cool also all right i remember till i'm asked <laughs> eddie said that that's funny i do that a lot it seems like when you're trying to um, remember an actor's name and you just can't of course i'm terrible with names uh, my Bert was the word man, we called him. He he could tell you anybody in any movie. He was just, that was his thing. He didn't want to pay Tetris, or excuse me, not Tetris. Um, oh, any of the memory type things with him. So what I'm doing is just kind of accenting one side of that stroke that I put on there. And you can come from both directions and maybe just pull some other lines in to give it more definition. And I'm just kind of staying on what's already there. I'm just reinforcing. And then maybe go back one other direction on that one. See how I'm just kind of looping it. Okay, not bad. All right, add some curly cues also. Uh, don't forget to do some of that and I'll get the piece up here and show you. You could band some lines around the edge if you want. I mean, you can keep going. I'm giving you the basic and I will make a pattern for you and put it on the blog. I just didn't have time. Uh, today is my son's birthday. And I met him for dinner and I'd already committed to that. And then I was like, oh, darn, I'm supposed to do something. So I cranked this out in about 30 minutes. And because I didn't want to disappoint you and not be live again. Okay, so once you have the outline on, then you can come back and just add some accent lines here and there. To kind of bring it to life and then you want to do your tendrils curly cues okay so you can add as many of those and then we also have um, the berries to put on there 
All right, let me thin this down again. It is so warm. Oh, and I did add some leaves here on this one on the top. But, and I'm not even going to look at this one because I'm afraid I'm going to hit it, get paint all over it. I just kind of go with the flow. So when you're doing, I'll turn this sideways, when you're doing these, so press, you lift up when you go into the turn, press and lift up in the turn. And then if you can't turn, just do some little wigglies. That works too, either way. See, color, pressure, and motion. So more pressure, larger strokes. Um, let's do a little one here. I need to put the berries in. And if you didn't want berries, you wouldn't, you know, you don't have to do it just like mine. Press, lift press and come out and see I ran out I have all kinds of little vines all right I did do a couple of strokes here at the bottom so let me go back grab my square shader corner load with the deep cerulean and I think I just doesn't matter but Make sure I've got enough of that dark in there that it will show. Is there a pumpkin tablet for the, oh, you mean pattern? Yes, I will make a pattern and put it on the blog. And I will attach the video to that same page. Marie, that way you can find everything. I started doing that a while back, probably almost a year ago, um, that you can actually find the free videos, any PDFs that I've given out free, everything is on the blog. And depending on whether you're glass or ceramic, you can find those under that sub category. Okay, but I will. Um, I just kind of drew it on tissue. A lot of times when I make my patterns, I will take my piece and flip it over, in this case a plate, and just draw my outline of where the platter is going to be and then I sketch the pattern onto that and then I go back and create an actual pattern for you guys off of that so that's how I get uh, depending on what the shape is will determine okay and let's add a little vine all right, and I'm going to go ahead and sign it while I've got the liner, and then I'll put the berries in. So I just like to hide my signature in a leaf. Uh, maybe you have a stamp with your signature that you could just stamp it on. And it does take a little practice. Just practice on paper. You can just practice using like watercolors. You don't have to use your product and waste it. Um, the, what you're doing is just trying to get the feel for the brush and how it moves. Okay, is what you're looking for. Thank you, Misty. Yes, Luann, I'll put that up. I'll put the pattern and everything up on the blog page on the Colors for Earth website. And you know what? I just realized I didn't, I could stop this thing at the bottom. Um, so the color concentrates, there's 41 colors, okay? And here is... Um, the sample, sampler, if you have never purchased our product or you just want to make sure you get um, the glaze, the CSP01 with your concentrates, this is another, we have the three kits, the CC Enhancer kits, one, two, and three. We have the 41. This one here has a pint of the clear and that uh, pretty much a palette that you can mix. You can intermix any two colors together to achieve another. Uh, color also. So that's one. This is, and these are the retail prices. They are on sale on the website. Uh, this is all 41 colors. The links do go up on YouTube, so you can just click on those and open another page if you need to, and then go back to it. Okay. All right. So we've got that on. We need to put an edge. I have misplaced my regular turntable, so I've got to use a banding wheel. 
turn this around. I like to use the foam brush. This is just a real expensive craft foam brush. Don't get the ones that are red handle and they have a coarser foam up here. I just, they're too coarse. I just don't like it. You end up wiping off what you're putting on, okay? The turntable is just an aid and allow you to turn the piece as you're going around. And I wet that brush and I'm coming in and I'm going to use the deep cerulean, the darkest color. And I'm just kind of thinning that, working it in. And so what happens is you've got a triangle at the bottom. You want to keep the edge of the plate right there in the center of that chisel edge. You don't ever want to lay down on this because there's a hard piece of plastic in there. So you want to just stay on that chisel edge and you stay right in the middle. And when you put pressure down, it conforms and goes over and under. So you get a nice edge. You can do this on any shape of a piece. I don't care if it's heart shape, petal shaped, triangle, rectangle, whatever it is, you can put a perfectly even edge on it. Um, Jeanette McCall showed me this probably, like I said, 20 some years ago. I have to give her credit. It's like one of those things like, why didn't I think of that, right? Flip the brush over to use the product on the other side. Do it a couple of times, let it dry, and then come back and do some more. Okay, anybody got any questions about what I've done tonight? Pretty quick and simple, I think. What is it, an hour? Yeah, we went on an hour, and it's done. And that's with me talking. So I think you can probably crank it out in 30 minutes or so, depending on how large your piece is. This is about 12 inch diameter. If you have like a, what I call a hard spot on the edge, uh, this is a commercial bis piece from Slumpy's. Um, you can go in and kind of tap it like this to get the color to hold it. Just be careful not to put too much pressure. But if you have that happening, that is a way that you can get it to hold and let it dry. Let it dry. That's, that's the biggest thing. Don't rush it. Okay. If that edge is thick, would it work with gold luster? I wouldn't waste gold and put it in this, Margaret. Um, I wouldn't do it. I would just use your regular luster brush. Um, it, this is going to absorb too much of it, and you're wasting your product. There, I wouldn't do it. Okay, Luann says, didn't you do the special kit involving the blues and purples and lavenders? Yes. Um, the Clay Share Color Stroke Kit has the purples and pinks in it, Luann, and I will have those at the show. If you pre-order those, just send me an email and pre-order or a message. Uh, you do get a discount. Okay. If you pre-order those, I will have that at the show up there, though, in Waukesha. I will have all the kits with me. We're working on all that this, this week. I leave Monday to drive. Thank you, Marlene. I'm glad you like the colors. You know, I, I try to do things different than everybody else out there. It's just one of the things Luann can tell you. She's been with me forever. Um, I just don't do it like anybody else. I hopefully, I try to be different. So here's the original. Okay. And there's the one we did tonight. So pretty close. Pretty close. So before, in case you missed the beginning. So if you want to check your application, you know, I could have went out here with a few more stamps. I did that with this one. Did the, It just depends on how much you want. You don't have to put the stamps at all. Do a stencil. Do nothing. It really, you could splatter it with the blues. That would work fine too. If you splatter, I would splatter with the light blue first and then the middle and then the dark and get less of each one. Okay. So when you're doing a design, you want three levels of the design. Our stamps is our background. The leaves is another la layer because most of them are behind. And then the pumpkin is your focal point. So your eye goes to the pumpkin first. The leaves are just a secondary layer in that, okay? Oh, Luann, that's why you're still hanging out with me. Okay, do you think I might, that I might make Florida Spring Show? Is, Marlene, is that the one in February? February? I think it is. I will, I will do my best. It just depends on how my body and COVID, okay? So I'm misting this with water staying about six inches away from it, that's going to show you what the colors are going to be like when they fire, okay? It's going to be closer 
to the coloring that you're getting. Okay, because as they dry, they turn chalky looking. Okay, they turn chalky. See, this one is pretty much dry, and I wet that one. We can do this one from this morning or this afternoon. This is on stoneware, so it does absorb differently, but you can see that they're pretty close. This one just has, this one was a booger because it has um, these three raised um, edges on there. So it was a booger to get the stamps even in there, but you could go around and you could, you could even band, like I said, in there also. Thank you, Eddie. I'm glad you like it. February 20 to 29. Will you message me those dates and I will see, you know, I used to do it years ago. Um, and then about six years ago, I quit going because I was concentrating on uh, the glass industry so much. And sometimes the shows overlap and I'm going to be honest with you. Um, I do more business at the glass show. So um, that's the reason that I did that. So I would love to come back. I was supposed to be there this fall, but then it got canceled. If I remember correctly, uh, I was asked to teach as a guest teacher. Mike Harbridge was there last time and uh, Diane that ran that one had asked me to do the next one. So um, I will reach out and see if I can get down there. Okay. You are welcome, Marie. Yes, thank you. Yes, I am feeling much better. About three days ago, I felt human. Um, I still get tired this time, you know, between four and five o'clock in the afternoon. So I'm just really trying to take it easy so that I don't end up overdoing it. And I forgot to turn my other mic back on. Um, I, hopefully I don't overdo it. And, you know, I don't want to be worse. I got to drive next Tuesday, Monday and Tuesday. So, um, so if you're coming to the show, Luann, pre-order. Okay, I will have some of our uh, Christmas tree green glazes, the pumpkin glaze, all the color concentrate kits, um, the color stroke kits also. Um, and I will have glass stuff also, if you're a glass person, um, I will have that there. I will be teaching seven classes. Yeah, seven classes. So um, I have two other ladies, one riding with me and the other one. Uh, will be there to help run the sales booth. Okay. Am I going to paint the leaves in the background or just stamp, leave it stamped? I'm going to leave mine stamped, Ginger, but you could go in and paint. Um, so you could go in and paint like every other little section. I had thought about that. That's time consuming. It depends on how much you want to make, you know, if you're selling these. That would be the, the, uh, the reason why I, I probably wouldn't if I'm selling because the fact that that takes too much time and you're losing your profit. Okay. Okay. So Luann says she'll do a pre-order. <laughs> anyway. All right, guys, any last questions before we go? These were color concentrates mixed with the gloss medium NT clear CSP zero one. And that comes in that sampler kit. Um, if you've not purchased any of our kits, it comes in that one there. You get 14 of the basic colors with a pint of that glaze. How do I pre-order? You can send me an email at info at colorsforearth.com or you have my other email also, which is um, ceramicsbypaula at gmail. Or I can show you right here. Here is the email. Okay, info at colorsforearth.com. Or you can and just email me what you want, and then I will do up an invoice, send it back over for your approval. And then once I have your approval, then I just need your payment. You can call me with that. Okay. All right, guys, thanks for joining me. Next Tuesday, I'll be on the road, so I don't think I'll do any kind of live. But I will try to do a live from the show and kind of show you what's going on in case um, next year you want to join us. Uh, Mike is teaching classes. Bob Marini from Mako is teaching classes and myself. And then there's some other things. If you were um, a clay person, GR Pottery Forms has decided to come. So they will be there. We have a big vendor, Glazer Ceramics, that has all kinds of anything you'll ever need. Lighting, um, cleaning tools, you know, everything and anything. They're a supply company, huge supply company. 
Um, so check that out. There's a list of the vendors on Mike's website, claypuzzling.com, and then go to Fired Art Expo. There is a Facebook page that's Fired Art Expo um, that you can join also if you're not on there already. Okay. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and thanks for helping me hit 6,000 subscribers this week. Yay. All right, guys. Enjoy the rest of your evening. I'll see you next time. Take care.